Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I made my um, vintage faux lamp work. Um, I just love doing um, the lamp work style. Um, but this one's a little bit different than the other ones that I've done. And what you're going to need is some translucent clay. I have some cernet here and I've got eight equal squares cut out, rolled onto a number four thickness on my Atlas 150, zero being the thickest setting. And this is cernet translucent and then I've got eight more squares over here um, equal squares again but this is rolled out onto a number eight nine being the thinnest so this is the second thinnest setting um, I just used this square I think it's like one and three quarter inches or something um, but you can cut any size square out it doesn't matter what size they are really so that's the clay that you're going to need um, as well as some liquid clay and I'm using bronze but you could use gold or silver or whatever colour you want to. I feel like I'm totally organised today guys, I don't think I'm going to forget anything, fingers crossed. You'll also need some Kato, well it doesn't have to be Kato but translucent liquid clay or in Kato's cl uh, case clear liquid clay but you could just use Sculpey, that's fine. I've also got a couple of colours of alcohol ink and I've got a cernet one here and this is the violet blue but I've also got this one um, which is the ranger alcohol ink pool so a purple and a blue again the colours are up to you but they're the colours I'm going with I'm also using some copper leaf again you can use any colour silver gold whatever um, you'll also need some little sparkly rhinestones and I've only picked a couple out but these are listed in my Amazon storefront and they're just little bronze charms that you can get I've just got a couple of those for now I might use more I don't know yet and then usual tools my steel soap blade these are listed in my Amazon roller and then the good old my spring mica powders my absolute favorite i've got two kits one's um, the two-tone you get more than this in the in the pack but i'm just using these three colors out of that um, kit the charcoal black mermaid dust and pure copper and then from the other kit the gemstone kit I'm going to be using the turquoise blue, shiny malachite, purple amethyst and green pyromorphite. And there are my absolute favourite mica powders ever. Um, and I've already made a mess with the black mica powder. The only downside to them is that they're in these baggies and they're a little, they do get a little messy. But I'm messy anyway. Anyway, to start off then... And excuse my grubby gloves because I was pl playing before I started this toot and I've got black mica powder and all sorts on my gloves. Anyway, let's go with the, um, the colours from the gemstone kit first. And you're going to need a brush. And I'm just going to move some of this clay out of the way because I don't want to get it too dirty from the other clays. So I'm just spreading them out a little bit guys and we'll start with one square and I'm just randomly applying the colour of the mica powders and I'm just going to open this over here because I don't want it to spill everywhere. Okay and I'm going to get my brush, dip it in the bag and I'm just going to add a little bit of that here and there. I'm not covering the whole piece in one colour and I'll put some on this one as well I think. Random, I'm not being over precise what colours goes where, what colour goes where or how much of each colour goes on the squares. You're just painting each square with different colours like so. And if you can hear a noise in the background, it's because my furnace is on, because it's freezing here. I can't believe how cold it is. Um, let's go with this shiny malachite next. A 
again I'm just dipping it in the bag and just brushing a little bit on here and there again pretty random I think I'll grab another square and put some on that one too like that can always go back to those colours if I want to but that's all I'm doing for now and then the next one the purple amethyst and again just applying that colour on the squares and it is messy but oh well Let's bring another square over and put some more of that on there. And you can brush it on in different directions. It doesn't have to be straight this way. You can, you can do diagonals if you wanted, whatever you fancy, guys. I'm just getting it on there. Even blending it a little bit. You can brush back over it and blend them in together a little bit. Like that. Um, do I want any more of this purple? Yep, I think I'll go a little bit on this one. Okay, <clears throat> and then from that same kit, the green pyromorphite. Let's bring another square over. So as well as making a complete mess of your desk, you are getting some very pretty colours on the clay. I'll put a little bit on this one and a little bit on this one. And I think a little bit on this one over here. Bring this one over. And my pieces are getting totally scuzzy but it will all come out in the wash all right so that's those that's from that one kit and then I'm just going to grab the other I'm not using the black just yet the black's going to be for down the road but for now I'm just going to use this mermaid dust one and apply some of that like so okay and then the last colour other than the black is the copper I'm trying to get the bag open and again just dip it in there and brush it on so like I say, you can apply these colours in whichever way you feel like doing so. Um, but that's just how I'm doing it. Okay. So you're just making up a, um, a load of squares with different mica powder colours on. You don't have to use the My Spring ones, but they are, in my opinion, they are really, really good. So I'm just going to clear this mess up guys so I'm just going to move my little squares out of the way and I'm going to clean this up and I will be back okay I've got everything else that I'm going to need at this stage I'm just going to pour out a little bit of the um, translucent liquid clay onto my tie you just need a little drizzle you don't need a great deal and I've got my copper leaf leaf ready to go and my alcohol inks and then the um, I've still got to use the black charcoal or charcoal black mica powder all right so let's just start with a square any square it doesn't matter it's pretty random I'm just going to move some pieces out of the way again put that there and I'm going to take my gloves off now I think because they're irritating me 
making my hands all sweaty and I'm just going to take a little bit of the liquid clay and just smear it over that square because we've got mica powder on there and um, it's just easier to um, put that on there so the rest of the clay sticks and I've just got my little square of translucent and remember they're rolled onto a number eight so they're fairly thin um, and I'm just going to alternate between um, the copper leaf, the alcohol inks and the black mica powder. I'm just going to put a little bit of um, liquid clay on there as well and just pop on this copper leaf and I'm not even necessarily going to cover the whole area with copper leaf. I just want little peaks of it really. I don't want to saturate it with the copper leaf. Okay. And then I'm going to take another square, any colour, doesn't matter which, pop that on there, followed by another piece of trans. And I think here I will add a little bit of this black mica powder. So I've taken my gloves off and now I'm going to get black fingers, aren't I? Oh well, oops. So I'm just going to take, I'm not going to saturate it, it's just a little light dusting of the black mica powder. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to get some more of the liquid clay and smear that over like so, followed by some more copper leaf. Like so. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is get my blade and blunt side down. I'm just going to cut some lines straight th straight down like this. Not all the way to the bottom of the stack. It's just more of a surface impression on those first layers of clay, the top layer of clay, like so. And this is just all adding to the um, look of the faux lamp work. Okay, so that's that. Followed by another piece of trans. Followed by another piece of the colour. Followed by some trans. And I'm wondering if I might need to roll out a little bit more trans. I know I should have um, rolled out a little bit more. I'm just rubbing some more of that liquid clay on there just to help this stick on that mica powder. Okay, and then again with the liquid clay. Don't worry about it getting a little dirty. It's just it's just the mica powders, so it's all going to work out. Followed by a little bit more copper leaf. like that and then I'm going to start adding these alcohol inks but I'm just going to grab my rubbing alcohol and just give that a little bit of a square on there just to help this alcohol ink flow a little nicer so just boop 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 nothing major just a little tiny drop you can do one colour, two colours, whatever colours. And I'm just going to put that on there too, like that. So this is just building up layers of colour um, which you often see in faux lamp work. There's just like spirals and layers of colour. Now you can be patient and let that dry or you can be impatient like me and get a heat gun. I'm, I'm just using this one. This is an excellent one actually. And it's got all those different settings on it. It's listed in my Amazon storefront. And I'm just going to set that onto a number six. 
and from a distance just dry that ink off a little bit it doesn't matter if it, if it moves around a little bit that's fine but I'm not patient I don't want to wait so I'm just going to give it a quick dry without cooking the clay It might still be a little bit tacky but that's fine just so long as it's not wet through all right so there's that another piece of trans on top and I'm contemplating whether to put some more black in I don't want it too too dark um, yeah I think I will just one more square of the um, the black mica powder I'm going to move that out of the way before I spill it everywhere again. Okay. Like so. I'm just going to give my hands a clean because they're black and disgusting. And a little bit more of this um, liquid, clear liquid clay. And some, whoops, too much. And some more copper leaf. Like so. Okay. And then I'm going to get my blade again and blunt side down, do some more cuts through. Like I say, not all the way down, just a little bit. Move that out of the way. So there's that. So that's all you do, guys. You're building up, you're alternating between, you know, the copper leaf, the trans, the colours, and everything else. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Next colour, then. Pop that on there. square of the thin trans on top once I've done the I almost keep forgetting to do this some of the liquid clay pop that on there and let's go with some more copper leaf maybe just a tad more on this one and a quick spray with my rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and a few drips of this alcohol ink i think i'm just going to go with the, the pool this time no purple get my heat gun and just give it a quick dry And let's put some more indentations in this one. So blade blunt side down again and just push that clay in like this. So all through the stack, you're gonna get a variation of patterns. Like that. Let's get another color. Pop that on there, liquid clay piece of the trans again which broke but never mind um, don't worry about that little tiny bit um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pop a colour on top of that instead of doing anything to the trans you don't have to do it on every single piece you know the cuts and everything I'm going to need a little bit more liquid clay I think just a little drizzle Um, I don't want to add any more black so I think I'm just going to add 
this. Some copper leaf. And it's sticking to me. Let's just get rid of these little pieces that I've got stuck on my finger. And I think that's all I'm going to need for that. Um, let's add some of the purple alcohol ink this time. And I think I'm probably going to need one more square. Oh, I didn't do the alcohol, did I? One more square of the trans, I think. So I was close. But not quite. <clears throat> Heat gun. Blade. piece of colour, yeah I'm going to need one more square of trans, so it was eight squares of colour and nine squares of the thinnest, the thinner translucent clay, I've already got some rolled out so I just need to take it down to a number eight. So I've rolled that onto a number eight, I'm just going to cut out another square of that. Probably going to need this little bit of trans for some back in, not for all of the pieces, just for some of the pieces. But I'll just leave that there for now. Give my blade a quick wipe because it looks a bit gunky. Liquid clay, the last piece of thin trans. Um, mm, I wasn't going to use the copper leaf, but I think I will. like so. Okay, so that's all you do guys, you just stack in and layer in and put in your knife in there to make some beautiful patterns in there. And I already did practice this and I know it looks nice, let's hope it comes out as nice this time. Last piece of colour then on top. going to tidy it up a little bit, wipe some of this mess off. Okay, give my hands a quick wipe. So we've got our stack and I'm hoping I didn't forget anything, I don't think I did. <laughs> Because it's like, uh-oh, did I forget to do... No, no, this is fine. So that's all I'm doing in terms of impressing pattern. I'm not going to be putting anything else into it. You don't need to. Um, I'm going to roll it out, flip it over, roll the back side of it. Whoops. And I'm going to cut this in half and stack, restack. Try and get it in half. You can already see that the colours are going to be so gorgeous in this. Cut in half and restack. Not exactly in half, but I don't care. You can push that in. That'll give it an extra little pattern from squeezing it. Da, 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 da. I absolutely love the pieces that I made yesterday, um, but it's extra messy, or I'm extra messy. Alright, so I've got this block now, and I'm just going to form it into more of a square block. Some of that, that clay, when I use the heat gun, has um, hardened a little bit, but not so that I can't use it, which is fine because again it will add a little bit of crackle or something, and that's absolutely fine as long as you don't overdo it and cook it 
too much so you can't actually use it but I can feel it there it's a little bit hardened and my fingers look terrible now okay right so that's that's it really guys that's the block that's not it for the tutorial but that's it for the block I'm just going to roll out a little tiny piece of very dirty translucent clay now just as a, a little bit of a backing for one of the pieces that I want to make and I did forget to do something but I'll do that in a second hang on so I'm just rolling out another piece of trance just a little bit I don't need a great deal what I did forget to do is do the final little little cut in the top but it's no biggie I can do it now and there we go just get this shape back a little bit give this a quick roll just so those cuts don't fall apart on me and what I want to do when I've done this is just take the top layer of this because those lines that I've just created really make a nice um, pattern but I'm only taking the top layer off just to make a little something with it with those really pretty lines running through it you're going to get some more of that further down the stack but I just wanted to take some off now I'm just going to thin this piece out a little bit okay so I'm just putting those to one side and that's to go on my backing clay but that's just a little side note so to speak all right so you don't have to do that you can just go straight into the stack and cut slices which is what I'm going to do for the rest of this once I've reshaped it a little bit so it has created a beautiful pattern all right so get my blade again and I'm going to cut fairly thick pieces as you know I don't like them too thin and I'm just going to cut straight down that's the pattern there and another slice here like so so I'm only going to get like four pieces out of this maybe a little bit more because I can always use the scraps but I I use literally like two ounces of clay all right now then I've got the cutter of choice that I want to use today because I'm going to do some earrings but I've also got this mold and unfortunately where I got this from that shop is no longer open so I don't know if you can find anywhere else that does mold similar to this but I'm going to do a mold with one of these pieces um, yeah probably this one so I'm just going to pop that in there give it a little squeeze give it a little mush make sure it's in there good okay give it a roll and obviously I need to slice that back off so I'm going to get my flexible blade for that and I don't think this is my best flexible blade but I don't know where the other one is right now so I'm actually going to get some more pieces because I'm going to use this as well but I'm just leveling this back off and the back's going to look equally as scrumptious now it looks very white at the moment but it is going to bake um, darker because all those colours are going to 
kind of show through the translucent clay. Well, that's what I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> that's what I, that's what happened yesterday when I did it. But I did use Primo, so Primo would probably be a little bit darker anyway. But we'll see how they turn out. So I'm just going to turn turn this out onto my tile and there's that one gorgeous I'm just going to tidy those edges a little bit because I know that um, mold is a little bit rough so there's that one guys pretty and pretty on the back as well so actually I'm going to place these on a tile because um, give them a little bit of a wipe with my isopropyl alcohol just to clean them off a little bit or clean it off a little bit go around the edges with my finger make sure it's nice and smooth there we go that's the first piece obviously not finished because there's more to do so there's that one right let's get this piece and give this a roll I want to make this shape so I need to roll it out long enough for that just a little bit more this one at a slight angle because I like that pattern cut that one out I've got a little bit more scrap that I can play with so there's that one oops don't start sticking on me Get, my, get it on my tile quick before I screw it up. Okay. There's that one. Another quick wipe. And there's that one. And I feel like making earrings today. I don't normally make earrings, do I? But I think I will today. So with this other piece, I'm just going to do the same thing. Cut out another one of these. So we've got earrings. And this one's extra stripey. Let me see what it's like on the other side. Both nice, actually. But... I want to try and match this as best I can. If I did that, they'd, they'd look a little too different. But obviously you don't have to do earrings. You could just make another, a pendant or something. So I'm just rolling this one out. And I'm going to... Slightly go at an angle again. And cut it out. Give it a little wobble. And there's some beautiful scraps to play with which I'm not going to do on camera, but you get the idea. Get this one, put it on the tile. So there's that one. I'm just going to give it a little tidy. A little wipe. So I think they're going to make rather nice earrings. Not that I wear earrings except for hoops, because earrings don't suit me except for hoops. All right, so there's those pieces from the from the block. And with the other pieces, the ones that I cut off in the beginning, I'm just going to add onto this piece of backing trans. I just really like 
the look of that those stripes so I wanted to put them to one side to make sure I got a piece with those stripy feathery stripy look but this piece is rather gorgeous too so I'm going to pop that there I'm just using some of these scraps up let's pop that there and they're just for down the road I'll I might just make those into chippy choppy I don't know yet all right so last bit then I'm just going to roll this out and then you know what's going to happen next don't you guys that's right a jolly good burnish with my steel soap so rub a dub dub And if you're new to clay, burnish just means to, well, it, I'm showing you how I'm doing it, but it's just smoothing out the clay um, because I want it to be really seamless on that backing sheet and there's still a ways to go on this one. You can feel with your fingers. Um, let me just lift this before I go any further. I don't want it sticking because sometimes it does. So I'm just going to go back over it again a few times. Like so. Okay, so we've got another, actually, we're probably going to get another two, maybe three pieces out of this. All right, so now I've got to make the decision of what shape to use because I didn't plan ahead and grab anything else, did I? Shall I do a round one? <laughs> Shall I do a round domed one <laughs> for a change? <laughs> no, do you know what? I don't think I'm gonna. <laughs> oh dear. Now I don't know what to do now, guys. I don't know what shape to do. So, hmm. Let me have a look at what I've got. Okay. Uh, I really love that shape but I use it too often I need to find something a little different that I've not used in a while but I've probably used this one as well but whatever, I'm going to go with this one and let's go with this one now all these cutters from are from Ojoy Creations I will list um, her in my Amazon storefront these ones are actually, well, I think this one is, and I know this one is of the Clay Boutique, from the Clay Boutique range. I'm not sure whether this one is or not. I can't remember. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the cutters, the custom-made cutters in, in um, the Clay Boutique section of Ojoy Creations are designed for the faux stones. But, oh, yeah, that one's going to look lush. Should I go there? Ooh, I don't know if I want to do another one of those. I love that shape. Hmm. Oh, I've already done two of those, so I'll go with different shapes on these two. Oh, it all looks so nice. I'm not sure which one to go with. Right, I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to go here for this one. Like so. And there is a little bit left again, but... I better not say the C word too often, I might get upset somebody. <laughs> Let's do some CC. <laughs> With... Um, Oh, that didn't cut very well, did it? What the heck? So I have got some scraps left, guys, but I probably will do some CC with it. Okay, I've got to cut this away. I didn't cut through well enough on that one. Whoops. Just got to try and neaten that up a little bit, I think. So I'm just kind of re-cutting just to get the shape back because I didn't cut through deep enough. Okay, so there's two more pieces. So two hands block. There is a little bit left over. 
but look how many pieces you can get out of it and just tidy the edges a little bit and there's that one gorgeous gorgeous and this one gorgeous just pop that on there give it a little shape make sure it's on the tile good I don't know guys I've um, gone off putting baking my pieces on paper because I don't really know why I just feel if I put them on I suppose I could put them on top of paper on top of tile but I don't know it's just easier to do this and you can move it around like that um, the only downside is it leaves shiny spots but because these are just going to be resined that isn't really an issue I think if I was to sand and buff I would still use just paper so I don't get that shiny back or anything but anyway I'm just rambling I've just decided I like doing them on tiles Oh dear. Right, another quick wipe down then, and I'm going to go and put these in the oven for an hour on Cernit's recommended curing temperature of 265. Okay, so it's 265 Fahrenheit or 130 Celsius, depends where you live but it tells you on the packet. All right, so they're the pieces, guys. They're gonna go and get baked, and I'll be back to show you the rest. Guys, I've had a change of mind. I was going to use this liquid clay on the pieces, but I've decided not to. I did that on my practice run yesterday, so I will show you those, but I've decided to go with embossing powder instead. So it's entirely up to you which way you do it. This is a, a little bit easier in my opinion. Um, but like I say, I'll show you the ones that I did with the liquid clay. So here's the pieces out of the oven. They look a little rough at the moment because I've given them a quick sand over with a 320 grit just to smooth any imperfections, etc. But do not panic because these are gonna be resined and you will not see that. All right, so I'm gonna take my first piece and like I say, I changed my mind. I'm going to use um, embossing powders. Now I've got um, the Wow embossing, pow embossing powders. And I'm going to, for this one, I think I'm going to use the uh, Metallic Copper Sparkle. Um, yeah, I did my last batch using the liquid clay. And it gets a little, I don't know, awkward drizzling the stuff on there to make the pattern. So I've decided to go with these instead. And I'm just going to do a very simple design. Very simple. Um, so I'm just going to draw up, do a little spiral. And then I'm going to bring it round and do another little spiral here. And then I'm going to do a little spiral here. Put my lid back on my pen. Oh, by the way, I'm using a Distress embossing pen um yeah a, rain, a ranger one these are listed in my amazon storefront and while we're talking about amazon storefronts um i played my video back so far and i realized that i said i will list ojo creations in my amazon storefront i'm so used to saying that um she's not listed in my amazon storefront i'm just going to leave a link for her shop in the description just to clarify so that's the little pattern I've done very basic because I want to do these as earrings I'm going to do the same thing on the other side but kind of going the other way <clears throat> so this spiral is going up and round that way on this one I'm going to go up and round this way and then just the same little spirals on either side like so you can draw any design you would like on these. But I'm kind of going with these colours because I think it gives it a more vintagey look. So there we go. So there's those two with the embossing powder on. I'll just put those to one side. Um, shall I do some gold on the other one or shall I stick with... Let's do another one with the copper. So I'm going to do the same thing, just some simple little spirals down here and just kind of bring it round 
like I say, you can do whatever you want to. I'm looking at my other piece to see if I can get it close to the same. And then another one here. I'm just making that one a little bit thicker. I don't want to over emboss it because I want a lot of that clay to still show through because the colours are going to be amazing once it's been resined. So that's that simple little design on that one. And I've got these two left. I think I'll try the gold on those ones. But again, the colour is all on you. You don't even have to use what I'm using. I mean, there's plenty of different colours um, for the embossing powders. But I'm just going to stick with these colours because, like I say, I think it makes it look a bit more vintage. How am I going to do this one? Let's bring the spiral up here. Do I do it on the right side or is that the back? No, that's the front because these this is the one that I did with the translucent back in. Um, a little spiral up there and another one going up there like that. Let's get this gold, sprinkle it over, tap it off and there's that design on that one. I'm just going to blow the excess off on each one before I forget. And then this last one, I'm going to do gold again. And I'm trying to, maybe I should do a little bit of a different design. What shall I do, guys? Um, spirals are kind of vintagey, though, aren't they? So I think I'm just going to stick with that. Like I say, you can draw any design you would like on these. And you can make them thicker lines, thinner lines, whatever you fancy. And these pens, you can get them with different nib sizes. This is quite a fine one. Um, this is my favourite, actually. Tap that off. And there's that one. Okay, so they're all embossed and obviously they need to be heat set. So I'm just going to empty this back into the container. And then I'm going to bring over my heat gun and you need to blast these with heat. You can put them back in the oven if you want to. The um, At the same temperature you bake your clay, that will still work. But this is just for quickness and ease. Just to um, use the heat gun. So I'm going to set this onto a number six. I'm going to let it blow for a second or two. Just to make sure it's hot enough. And then I'm just going to hold the gun over the embossing powder in circular motion don't hold it too close and eventually you'll see that embossing powder do its thing it takes a few seconds and it's starting to go now I don't know if you can see that on camera but that's that one done and you can see it's kind of melted as opposed to this one that hasn't yet been blasted with heat so I'm going to go and do this one. And that's that one done as well. I'll do the rest. <clears throat> Alright, so that's them embossed. I'm just going to move that out the way because it's extremely hot and I have burned myself on it before. But there's the gold ones. 
so you can decide gold copper silver even purple whatever color you want to go with okay now then I'm going to let these cool down and then I'm going to do these two on camera and these two off camera but I will resin these on camera so you can see once again how I do it although I have changed how I do it a little bit I used to use a little cocktail stick I don't anymore I use a brush but I'm just going to let these cool down and then I'll be back so I've got my little tiles and I've just put some painters tape on there and I've got it sticky side up so the pieces can stick on there without moving around so they're the earrings that I'm going to do on camera I will do this exact same thing on these off camera but same thing on a tile with some sticky tape okay now I use this resin J Diction UV resin hard type this is listed in my Amazon storefront and I just use a, a regular little paintbrush and to keep it from going hard I just keep it wrapped up in this aluminum foil and it's good it's good forever well, it's good for a very long time let's put it that way you don't need to worry about cleaning it then you can just stick it in some foil and put it to one side so this is what I do now I pour my resin kind of in the middle of each piece like so and then I use the brush just to brush it to the edges like so using UV resin does take some practice and like I say I did used to do this with a cocktail stick but um, I much prefer doing it with a brush and it won't leave brush marks resin is self leveling so it will just level out and it won't leave any um, marks behind so just make sure you drag it right to the edges and um, as close to the edge as you can. I don't resin my sides. I will go back and sand these and possibly buff them just to make them shiny. I just find it easy. That's my personal preference and I find it easier that way. Resining the edges is a bit awkward to me. Okay, so there's that one and that one's dribbling I shouldn't have tilted it like that if that happens don't panic I'm going to sand these anyway so I'll just sand that off but that's that one okay and I'm going to do the same on this side in the middle of the piece and then just drag it to the edges so you're getting quite a deep pool of the resin in the, mid in the middle of the piece. Don't do it too much because you don't want it to overflow. But it just means you can easily drag it over to the edges then. And if you turn the tile always you can see where you've missed spots possibly. Like so. And those colours are really coming through now, aren't they gorgeous? And it's going to vary depending on um, which colours you use, obviously. This one looks like it's got a lot more of the green showing through. Because it's going to depend on where in the stack you cut. So you're going to get a different, different look on each piece that you make. All right. So when you're finished, get your little piece of aluminum and just wrap it back up in there and that brush will keep for a very long time. Okay, and the last thing before I put it under the UV lamp, I get one of these long lighter things and I just give it a quick blast over with this to burst any bubbles that might have come to the surface. Like so. I go over it a few times just to be sure and then you can put that under your UV lamp and this one has dribbled but I'm not going to worry about it I'll deal with it afterwards I'm just going to stick this under my UV lamp guys and this is a Melody Susie one um, which is listed in my Amazon storefront and it's got three settings on it three timers on it so you don't have to worry about checking it every two every 90 seconds or something it's actually got a 30 minute timer on it not that you need to keep it under for 30 minutes but it's you know it's good to have a, a a timer where you can just put it under and, and forget about it 
Right, so I'm going to go and do the same on these and I will be back. Okay guys, these have been resined now, front and back. And it's just a case of embellishing them a little bit. Um, so I've got these little shiny rhinestones. These are listed in my Amazon. We're going to need some more resin. And I've got one of these like sticky picker rubber pen type things that's also listed in my Amazon storefront. So all I'm going to do now is just take a little bit of the UV resin, pop it on the tile, get my silicon brush. You don't want to use, uh, I don't know, I'm just rambling, you need to use a silicon brush. Um, and I'm just going to decide where I want my little rhinestones to go. So I think I'm going to go boop, boop, a boop, four little dots here, that's where the um, rhinestones are going to be held, and then on this side as well, on this earring, boop, boop, boop. Put that to one side, get my little sticky pen thing, I don't even know what you call these, rhinestone picker rupper <laughs> and I'm going to go with these little rhinestones which have got a little bit of colour in them rather than just the plain silver there are some plain silver ones in there but why not add a little bit of colour if I can get them out the right way up and just pop where the resin is like so and there and then you can like move them around a little bit where you want them to go so that's that side let me just tip some of these out it's easier and then the same oops on the other earring boop 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 and boop and there we go that's those on them I'm just going to give these a quick blast with my little UV light again this is listed on my Amazon storefront it's just handy for when you're doing um, stuff like this just a few quick seconds just to partly cure it so it doesn't move because I also want to add these little bronze charms that I talked about at the beginning and you can get a whole box of them all different you know shapes and patterns and whatnot I just thought bronze would look kind of nice with um, this kind of look and I'm just putting these little rhinestones back we're trying to this this pen's really good actually Right, so I'm going to get my little silicone brush again and I'm going to get some of that resin and I'm going to pop it at the base here. I want a bigger amount of resin for this. Big enough to hold your little charm in place and just pop that on there, she says. Just pop that on there, she says. <laughs> wow, that stuff's sticky. Let me just manoeuvre it a little bit and then the same on this side and the resin will hold this in place, it's not going to move like so and oops wrong side just pop that on there like so all right so I'm just going to put these back under the UV light so it's fully cured and then I'll come back to show you the final bit along with all the other pieces that I made they're fully cured now they're all nicely stuck on they're not going to come off and all I've done is drill a hole at the top of each one with one of these nifty little hand drills again listed in my Amazon storefront and I found these really cute little pinch bales with just a little loop on the end and they'd be perfect for earrings um, you get a box of them I've already used a few 
and you get them in gold and silver they're listed also in my Amazon and I'm going to use these um, hook earrings now the only problem is I found this little ball on here doesn't fit through that loop so to solve that problem I just snip let me just open it up a little bit I just snip that ball off and then that will fit through as long as you close them up good and proper they'll be fine but I don't think I've ever used gold before well, very very rarely anyway but I just think the gold looks good for this look so I'm just going to open these pinch bales up pop that through the hole like so give it a little squeeze just to make sure they're on there tight and then pop one of these <coughs> hooks through so now that fits through now that ball's been removed and just close it up make sure you close them up tight like so and that's one earring and I just think that looks gorgeous very vintage looking whoops and I dropped it where did that go there it is Okay, so there's that one. So I'll just quickly do this one then and then I'll show you the other pieces that I've made or semi-made, semi-finished because you know me, I don't I don't finish <laughs> a lot of pieces on camera. I don't finish a lot of pieces off camera, hence the great big box full of stuff that I've not finished, which I really need to do. Now I've got myself a little Facebook shop. Um, again, I'll link that in the description but that is my selling page only guys um, not um, a group to ask questions etc it's just for me to sell my pieces um, I'm hoping to get an online shop you know an actual proper website at some point but I procrastinate on that to be honest and I'm finding this extremely tricky because I can't see very well I'm just closing this last little it up trying to there we go all right so they are the finished earrings aren't they stunning I love those and those colors really popped um, once the resin was put on but there they are that's those earrings and they're the ones that I did on camera with the embossing powder. Let me just show you a pair that I did exactly the same way, exactly the same technique, um, more or less the same colours. I might have varied them a little bit with the purple. I can't remember exactly which ones I used, but they're those ones. And these these are the ones that I used using the um, copper, not the copper, the bronze liquid clay. Now, it's easy to do the embossing powder, but I I do personally think that the um, liquid clay gives it an even more vintage feel. It looks a little puffier, whereas the embossing powder kind of goes a little flat. They both look gorgeous, but if you wanted to do that, all you do is squeeze a little bit of um, liquid clay out and use a silicone brush. And what I do is just scoop it up and I kind of dot it on to start with just to get my general shape and then smooth it out afterwards so they're the earrings and I just I love those and I'm not an earring person um, just quickly show you the other pieces that I made on camera again with the embossing powder I have resined and glittered the back of these and I do have a video on how I do that guys if you're going to use glitter in your resin don't paint it on with a brush you'll ruin your brush um, use a silicone brush for that if it's just resin on its own then it's fine to use the brush but there's those pieces I didn't put a charm on these ones I just put the little rhinestones but they're kind of cool and then the other one that I did on camera I've just I've just resined front and back I did one of those little charms and some more rhinestones and then I've just pushed in a fancy pinch bale ready to be I don't know cord or chain or something not decided yet but there's that piece as well all right guys and those 
these pinch bales that I've used for this one um, again these are listed on my Amazon as well and you get different ones in the kind of fancy looking I really like them they just really dress up a piece okay guys there are all the pieces I hope you enjoyed that I love the earrings especially but there you go there they all are so thank you for watching and I will catch you later bye